Hey everyone, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from all over the planet. If you've got a question you'd like to ask me, go to DinosaurGeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, fill out your question and submit it. Keep in mind we get thousands of these every single month and I can't possibly answer them all, so keep trying if I've been unable to get to yours. All right, let's get started. Martin from Chicago, Illinois says, Hey, DG, it's me again. Hey, Martin. Always good to hear from you. I'm glad you like my comic I'm making. I do, Martin. Um, Martin's making a comic, and it's really pretty cool. I like it a lot. He said, anyway, what do you think Carnotaurus's head horns were for? Um, you know, based on looking at them, they're pretty heavy duty. They're pretty thick. And that suggests to me that they were certainly being used for something. And my guess, Martin, would be that they probably used them either in ritualized combat between males, maybe in a shoving match to see who's the strongest. That's very common in the animal kingdom. Um, in fact, my little brother and I used to put our heads together and push each other across the room now that I think about it. You know, that answers a lot of questions about my little brother. Hmm. Okay, anywho. Uh, so anyway, that's what I think they were used for. They may have also represented the maturity of an animal. In the dinosaur kingdom, in the animal kingdom, um, one of the things that we find is that fighting is the last thing you want to do because being injured makes life difficult. Um, so generally there are ways to prevent a fight and one of those would be to visually demonstrate how old you are to your rivals. If your horns are bigger and more robust and more pronounced then that would suggest that you are an older individual and are probably smarter and have been through more fights. So if you're a little young punk Carnotaurus and you want to pick a fight with that big dude over there it would make you think twice before running out and getting yourself killed. Uh, second question would be, why do you think Ceratosaurus's teeth got so big? Martin, that is a great question, man. They're so thin uh, that they're not very strong uh, laterally, meaning when they bite into something, if they twist their head, they could break off relatively easily, I think. Um, they obviously were used for something, and my guess would be maybe they had a specialized diet and they needed those elongated teeth to bite into something that wouldn't put up much of a fight. I one time read where Dr. Robert Bacher proposed that Ceratosaurus may have been like uh, Spinosaurus, may have actually uh, lived on a diet of fish. Uh, certainly its body has some adaptations that would make it a great fish catcher, so maybe those teeth were long because biting into a fish meant not having to worry about snapping your teeth off because a fish really can't struggle that much if you grab him by the, bo by the main part of his body. Okay, uh, Timur from London, England. And Timur, I think once before you told me how to pronounce your name, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name properly. Uh, if not, I, I don't mean any disrespect. Uh, you know what it's like for me in pronunciations of names. So anyway, Timur, I believe that's your name, uh, how you pronounce it. Uh, he says, hi, Dinosaur George. Um, who would win in a fight between Maposaurus, Acrocanthosaurus, and Carcharodontosaurus? He says, P.S. Happy Earth Day to you. Happy Earth Day to you too, my friend. Um, those are some pretty cool dinosaurs. Maposaurus certainly is the biggest of the three, I think. Carcharodontosaurus would be another giant. Uh, Acrocanthosaurus is a wickedly cool dinosaur. I love that guy. But I don't think he'd be able to put up a, much of a fight between Maposaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. Now keep in mind, all three of these guys are from different continents and they probably never would have ever seen each other. But if they did, let's just say for the sake of argument, I guess I know more about Carcharodontosaurus than I do about Maposaurus. And I'm guessing then that uh, Carcharodontosaurus would win simply because I'm more familiar with it and its body design. I've never seen very much about Maposaurus other than reading some information. So I, I guess I don't know how to answer this question properly. But if I had to flip a coin, uh, I would say Carcharodontosaurus would win uh, simply because I know more about that guy. Okay, Sam from, I think this is Shiv... Chivaria, Italy? Chivaria, Italy? Chivari? Chivari, Italy? I don't know. Anyway, Sam, is Sam says, ciao, uh, George. Ciao to you too, Sam. Um, this is your number one Italian fan. I am very honored, Sam, that you are my number one Italian fan. Uh, here's this question. Who would win in a fight between a dire wolf and a cave hyena? That's kind of a cool question, Sam. Cave hyena is much more robust, much more dangerous animal than a dire wolf. Dire wolf's cool dude, but I believe a cave hyena would be a way bit too much for uh, something like a dire wolf. Uh, and then second, what are the differences between Tyrannosaurus rex and Tyrannosaurus batar, other than size. 
Uh, Sam, there's a number of differences. Most of them have to do with skeletal design and differences within the skull. Um, I even think, if I remember correctly, I think I even think Tyrannosaurus rex has more teeth. Uh, the difference really is that Tyrannosaurus rex was a uh, was a later model, model uh, meaning that it had some additional adaptations that Tyrannosaurus batar, who lived in Asia, didn't have. So think of Tyrannosaurus batar as being the Model T, and think of Tyrannosaurus rex as being a, uh, uh, let's say, a Ferrari. <laughs> as much more, uh, much more exciting, m many more cool toys, uh, and much better uh, body design. So really, the design, the, it's it's the skeletal designs that are different, not simply size. Okay, Ian from Weatherford, Texas, my home state. Um, he says, "Hey George, you have stated on your blog that Larry Martin is one of your favorite paleontologists. I find this somewhat surprising, as he is noted opponent of the dinosaur bird, bird connection. What, what do you like about him, and why?" Uh, Ian, that's a Cool question. Dr. Larry Martin has always been one of my favorite paleontologists. When I think of Dr. Martin, I always apply the word clever. He is a clever guy. He thinks uh, he thinks of things from a different point of view than other paleontologists. And not only that, he is one of the nicest people. I was lucky enough to have lunch with him one time. And I could have sat there and, and, and I had dinner with him also in a previous time. I could have spent six hours talking to the man. Um, sometimes paleontologists don't all agree on the same thing. But that doesn't change my opinion of them if, if I like them and I think their work is interesting. Now I will tell you that in speaking to, to Dr. Martin, he was able to demonstrate a lot of connections between Deinonychus and birds. And he was a very strong opponent of thinking that there was a great connection. So he may not believe that a modern bird should be ca uh, um, uh, categorized as dinosaurs, but he does show some very strong support that there is similarity. So uh, we may differ a little bit on some of that, but the reason why I like the guy so much, uh, in all honesty, Ian, is that he is one of the most courteous people I've met. He is absolutely a brilliant man. He's very brilliant. Uh, and I just like him a lot as an individual and also the work that he's done. Okay, finally, my buddy Zach from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. He says, Dear George, man, it's been so long since I've done this. Let's see if I can remember how to ask a question. <laughs> Okay, Zach, I know I've been off for a couple of months, so uh, you got me. He says, uh, my question this time is about the big confusion between Nanotyrannus and Tyrannosaurus rex. Why do you think some people try to put Nanotyrannus as a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex? It just doesn't make any sense to me. I clearly see just within the skull that they are different species. Well, Zach, uh, there is some debate that rages between whether the dinosaur they found, um, uh, I think it's in the Burpee Museum, it's, its name is Jane, uh, the people that found it and the museum promotes it as a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, a large number of paleontologists looked at the remains and said this can't be a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex. There's too many variations between it. And those that believe it is a juvenile say, well, but it will morph into a Tyrannosaurus rex as it gets older. Um, in science, we should always be respectful of different points of view. I don't agree with that. I've, I've seen the remains of a true juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex, and they are so dramatically different than the dinosaur in the Burpee Museum. Uh, I don't see how, once, once people are able to see that juvenile rex, I think it will change a lot of opinions. Probably one of the things that amazes me the most when you look at that dinosaur, though, is Dr. Larry Whitmer, uh, Professor Larry Whitmer in um, uh, Ohio University, did CAT scan studies on both Tyrannosaurus rex and the dinosaur uh, we call Nanotyrannus. And what he found is not only were the brains completely different design, but they were, they were different position in the skull. In Nanotyrannus, the brain actually uh, causes the skull to kind of slip, tilt slightly down when it walked. We can determine how they carried their heads based on like the inner ear canals of the brain. Well, what they found was that the brain was completely different. So if you're to believe that the dinosaur that they call the juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex, or, or the one they call Nanotyrannus, would have morphed into Tyrannosaurus rex, you would have to believe that number one, it would grow more teeth, that the teeth would change in design, and that the brain would morph into something different. And I just don't believe that's possible. All right, that's it for this time, everybody. If you have a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Until next time, for you young people, make sure to practice your reading skills. And for everybody out there, let's use good manners. Take care, and I'll see you soon.